friends in this lecture we will uh, di first discuss about the radiation therapy then we will discuss about chemotherapy for cancer treatment as we have discussed before about the surgical therapy we have seen various approaches by which surgical operations on uh, can aid cancer patients either to cure the disease or to provide additional supports or palliative care now surgical therapy is not possible in every situation because not all the tumors at every organ or internal site of the body can be operable sometimes surgery at some sites may damage the nearby organs which can be fatal to the patients in those cases one good option can be radiation therapy so radiation therapy or radiotherapy uses high doses of ionizing radiations which are toxic to the cells ionizing radiations in the form of x rays gamma rays electron beams protons are used to kill the tumor cells or shrink the tumor so how radiotherapy actually works or destroy the cancer cells these ionizing radiations are damaging to most of the biomolecules but they are more effective on damaging the nucleic acids especially dna you can guess if the dna of the cell is damaged it will first try to repair it but when damaged excessively like in this case of ionizing radiations the dna damage becomes irreparable and cell will undergo apoptosis and remove from the body body but uh, don't think that it is an immediate response you might have seen that cancer patients usually go for multiple settings with the radiologist that means only after repeated exposures the dna damage induced cancer cell death will take place radiotherapy basically treat uh, these those tumors which are not spread to distant areas means it is not that effective in highly metastatic tumors because the radiations are focused onto the specific tumor site not to all over body also on uh, one uh, negative side of radiotherapy is that they damages lot of normal healthy cells besides the cancer cells sometimes radioactive substances are injected intravenously or sometimes by mouth where they can travel to different parts of the body through blood hence increasing the chance of more side effects uh, it is more effective not all for or not all types of cancer treatment as we have uh, discussed before since radiations cannot reach all the organs it is mainly used to treat cancer of larynx lungs cervix prostate thyroid brain etc it is also used in combination with other forms of therapy like surgery and chemotherapy depending on the cancer type and stage for example radiotherapy can kill the leftover cells after chemotherapy or it can be used in combination with surgery where before surgery radiation is used to shrink the tumor mass for some cancers uh, radiation works better than surgery as it is less harmful for some other cancers drugs called radio sensitizers are used prior to radiation's exposure this combination will make the radiotherapy more effective than using it alone many combinations of anti cancer drugs and radiation dosages has been found to be much more effective than the individual treatments but yes side effects are also there killing the normal cells many times radiotherapy is used to prevent the spread of cancers to the secondary site what this means a patient with lung cancer may be exposed to radiation targeted to their head since brain is the usual secondary site for lung cancer sometimes a person getting treatment for a cancer can be prescribed for a radiotherapy in another organ even if the second organ is not showing any signs of cancer cells so these are all the preventive radiotherapy like surgery radiation can be given to the patients to reduce the pain associated with cancer overgrowth a form of palliative radiotherapy there are actually two main categories of radiation therapy external beam and internal 
radiotherapy. What kind of radiation therapy uh, a patient will be receiving depends on the type of cancer, size and location of the tumor, general health condition of the patient, uh, its proximity to other uh, vital tissues and organs, etc. The external beam therapy, it uses a big machine, the, uh, the linear accelerator to radiate X-rays or electron beams to the tumor site of patient's body. It is non-invasive and used to locally treat the cancer without affecting the whole body of the patient. The machine rotates around the body thereby sending radiation to the tumor site from all angles. This is usually used for many types and majority of the cancers. Deciding the dosage on the external beam radiation is a crucial point uh, since side effects are many. The total dosages are split into several small dosages and given to the patient to avoid single time high dosage exposure which can be toxic. The second type of radiation therapy is the internal uh, radiation therapy. Here, the radioactive isotopes can be both liquid and solid uh, are inserted into the patient's body either intravenously or orally. Generally, radioisotopes, uh, of, uh, radioisotopes of iodine, gold and cesium are used which produces gamma rays or electron beams. Internal therapy with solid media like capsules, seeds, ribbons, etc. are called brachytherapy or interstitial radiation therapy. The re isotope is inserted near to or on into the tumor site. Hence, it works more or less like local therapy, like that of external beam. The second type is the systemic radiotherapy where liquid radioactive isotopes are used to inject in the blood or given orally. The substance will spread throughout the entire body looking for the cancer cells and destroy them. The internal radiation therapy as it is used very near the tumor site comparably less harmful means less side effects. Also with this type we can expose to higher dosages but for a short period of time reducing the common side effects. The brachytherapy used to treat cancers of the head and neck, breast, cervix, prostate and eye. Systemic therapy is used to treat cancers like thyroid cancer, prostate cancers etc. So there is a common side effects are there like fatigue, uh, loss of appetite, hair loss, nausea and vomiting whereas it can adversely affect the reproductive organs and although rare, radiations can induce a new cancer in the patient which is a major concern. Apart from that, radiation therapy can be expensive because of the involvement of lot of high-end instruments and huge manpower. Also, the patient has to undergo special diets to maintain the general health conditions and checking the weight loss. We'll discuss about the next topic now that is about chemotherapy. Very briefly, since it cannot be a single topic. Uh, different drugs for different cancers targeting many different pathways in each of them are there which deserves special separate lecture series. We will restrict our discussion to the general concept of chemotherapy and brief note on principal and most commonly used drugs. So um, as we understand chemotherapy is the cancer treatment with drugs. As the drugs are taken orally or intravenously uh, chemotherapy works all over the body, but to reduce the side effects, targeted drugs can be synthesized which will have their maximum cytotoxic effects in the tumor site itself. Basically, uh, chemotherapy works by inhibiting the functions 
needed for cell survival like DNA synthesis and replication, DNA damage repair, cell signaling, metabolism, protein synthesis, hormone signaling and so on. Depending on their mode of action, the anti-cancer drugs can be categorized. The first important one are the alkylating agents. These are the drugs which alkylates, that is add an alkyl group to the guanine base of DNA, thereby halting the DNA synthesis. A good example is cyclophosphamide. Next, the antimetabolites. These are the compounds which blocks the use of metabolites by the metabolic enzymes resulting in the inhibition of that particular metabolic pathway. 5-bromouracil uh, is such or 5-fluorouracil is such a compound which inhibit nucleotide biosynthesis and hence new DNA synthesis. Mitotic inhibitors. These are the inhibitors of cell division. Majority of them are plant alkaloids, example uh, paclitaxel, which inhibits mitosis by binding to the tubulin protein. Antibiotics. Although antibiotics are used to treat bacterial infections, but there are certain group of compounds originally identified as antibiotic, but also found their uses to treat cancers, example doxorubicin, bleomycin, etc. Antiangiogenesis drugs are the compounds which specifically target the process of new blood vessel formation that is angiogenesis by the cancer cells, example avastin. Lastly, the hormone receptor binding inhibitors, they block the hormonal signaling so that the hormone responsive cancers like breast and prostate cancer cells cannot receive their growth signal and die. The most common side effects of chemotherapy are listed here, although there can be so many other depending on the patient's health conditions, the dose, duration, stage of the tumor and so on. So with this, we come to an end of this lecture where we have discussed about radiation therapy in detail along with a brief note on chemotherapy. Hope it was useful. See you in the next lecture on alternative cancer therapies. Thank you.